thank you for joining me and today I'm going to be showing you how to build this 1 12th scale kitchen island unit. As you can see we've got this slatted storage area at the back and a couple of drawers. We've got a towel rail here. I've left quite a large open space at the front here because I want to include some taller items in here like some serving trays and things like that but you can always add a shelf and I talk about that as we go along and then this side which is facing the arga is just plain but if you wanted to put your towel rail on the other side or indeed an additional towel rail you can do that and I've used casters which I thought was a really nice feature rather than just having a plain leg but of course you don't have to use the casters and you would then just need to cut the leg pieces, these six leg pieces from your 5x5 five five strip just a little bit longer by 3 sixteenths of an inch or 4 millimetres and then that will keep this at 3 inches or 76 millimetres high which is the same height as the other units in the kitchen. OK, so the cutting list for this project is in the description box below and I've also included a list of the tools and materials in the description box rather than putting them here in the video. If you'd rather see them here as a list then let me know and I'll continue to include them in the video. OK, let's get started. We're going to begin by attaching the mouldings to the side pieces. So I've got here some glue dispensed onto a piece of card I'm using a cocktail stick to apply it. I've got my clothes pegs ready over here, or clothes pins, ready to secure the pieces together. And I've also got a spare piece of strip wood, which I'm going to use to make sure the mouldings are flush along the top and bottom edges. So begin by applying glue to the wider moulding. And I always just check which is the nicest side when I'm attaching mouldings. And then if there's any sort of defects in the wood, make sure they're facing downwards. So attach that along the top. And then bring in your piece of strip wood and push both pieces up against it. That will make sure you've got a nice flush edge along the top there. Use a spare cocktail stick to remove any excess glue and then attach the remaining moulding. Again, making sure you've got a nice flush edge. Bring your piece of, oops, bring your piece of strip wood in. Press them both against it. And then you can use your clothes pegs to secure the mouldings and it's important you do that because as the glue dries the moulding will try to curl upwards. And that piece can then be left to dry. Once you've allowed enough time for the glue to dry remove the pegs and then take each side piece and sand along each side to make sure that you've got a nice flush edge so just hold the piece against your sheet of sandpaper and sweep it along just in the one direction. Don't sort of go back and forth with it like that as you'll round the edges. And I've already done both of these pieces. And we're now going to attach a leg to each side of each piece. So apply glue along each edge. Pop that piece back down on your work surface and then attach a leg to each side so that the top of each piece is flush. That. Press those together and then I'm just going to bring in my spare strip wood. And what you can actually do here is push everything up against it so you know you've got a nice flush top edge and then you can put a piece at either side and press the legs against the side piece. And that will ensure as well that the legs lay flat and they don't sort of try to curl inwards or angle themselves inwards rather. 
Whilst holding on to that I'm just going to take a spare cocktail stick and remove the excess glue. Okay, pop that piece to one side, slide it along your work surface rather than pick it up in case it's still a bit wet and then repeat with the remaining side piece. We're now going to mark up the back piece for placement of the shelf. So turn it lengthways like that. And we're going to do a pencil mark 15 millimeters or 19 30 seconds of an inch from what will become the top edge. So do a little line at each side of the wood, 15 millimeters, 19 30 seconds of an inch. And then place the rule just below your pencil mark to allow for the thickness of your pencil nib and then join those up. Pop that to one side and we're going to do that same pencil mark on each of the side pieces. So 15 millimetres from the top, 19-30 seconds of an inch. Again join those up and then the same on the remaining side piece. We're now going to attach the back piece to the edge of the side piece and this time we're going to go right to the back of the back leg. And normally I would bring it to the front of that back leg so we've got that lip at the back. But this time I want a flat back on the piece that we can then join the rest of the kitchen island to. So that's why I'm doing it this way this time. So make sure you've got a nice flush edge along the back there. And I'll turn and show you that in a moment. I just want to bring in a cocktail stick to remove that glue again. So this time you've got a nice flat flush edge along the back there. And then you've got three pieces here, the top, bottom and the shelf. They're all the same size. So take one of those and apply glue to a long edge and a short edge. And this is going to sit on the inside edge of the joined pieces and right towards the top. Again, so we've got a nice flush edge along this top. So get your sort of shorter edge in line first, like that. And then you can pull that back piece in to meet it and that will square the whole thing off. Make sure you've got a nice flush, flush join along that top edge of the back piece as well. Press that all together and now we're going to bring in our shelf piece and this is going to sit above this pencil line here because I want to create a nice narrow drawer and I'm just going to put one drawer in there but I'm going to use two drawer pulls on the front. So again we're applying glue to one long and one short edge. I might just have to turn it away from you for a moment but I'm just placing it above that pencil line so you can just see the pencil line beneath and I'll turn it as soon as I can, as soon as I've got it into position like that so you can just see that pencil line there and press it all down and the same thing again with the bottom piece, the remaining of those three pieces. And again we're going to attach this on the inside edge and so it's flush with the bottom of the side and the back. So get your sort of shorter edge, let me see if I can turn around and do it, shorter edge into position first. It's flush along the bottom edge of the side piece and then you can bring the back piece in to meet it and square the whole thing up. Press it all together. So 
So what I've created here is, that'll be the drawer, and then we've got this big open area here. Now I've already sort of got plans of what I want to store in there. I want to put some recipe books in and some taller things, maybe like a wooden tray stood up in there. So I want this larger area here. But if you wanted to add another shelf in the centre there, then you can do that if you're just sort of planning on putting a few smaller um, accessories in there. But I'm going to leave mine with that big open space there. And now we're going to attach the side. So apply glue to these exposed areas. And isn't that the beauty of making your own doll's house furniture, that you can do exactly what you want with it to fit with your plans. That's what I love about it anyway. So I'm just laying this on so that it's flush with the front edges of these pieces here. Flush at that bottom as well, and you've got that nice straight flush edge along there. So we're really just making a very simple sort of boxy unit here. I'm just going to grab some masking tape and I'm going to put a piece right over the side like that. Pull it nice and tight. I just want to make sure I'm not knocking that top piece out of place, which I'm not. Press that down there. And then I'm going to put a couple of pieces right over that side and over the front and back. Piece there like that. Pull that round onto the other side. And the same at the bottom as well, I think. You can use your larger clamps to do this if you prefer. I just prefer tape because it's just easier to position it really. And that piece can then be left to dry. We're now going to start constructing the back part of the island and we're going to begin by attaching the mouldings to the side and the back pieces. So I've got a couple of pieces of spare strip here to help with the positioning of the mouldings and I've got my clothes pegs ready as well to clip everything together. So begin by applying glue to the back of your first moulding. And again, remember to check for the nicest side before you attach it. Like that. And then lay it across the top of the side piece. And then just bring in your spare strip and press both pieces against it. To make sure you've got a nice flush edge along that top. And then remove your excess glue. Same with the remaining moulding. Place that along the bottom edge. So this is for the opposite side of the island where I've got two drawers on the sort of work inside and then this will be sort of like a bit of a blanking plate on the other side. So again press those pieces against your piece of strip. Careful not to knock your first moulding out of place like that. Remove any excess glue and then bring in your pegs and put one on each end like that. Stop those pieces from trying to curl upwards as the glue dries. And then just fit another couple in the middle there if you can. But it's those ends that the, are the important bits. And that piece can then be put to one side to dry. Just pop that down on the floor there. And then you can do the same thing with the back piece. And the way I'm going to be positioning this in my kitchen, this back piece won't actually be seen, 
but I like to add supports, not just for how they look, but because it sort of strengthens the piece as well. And I always add mouldings to the back of pieces of furniture, as you probably know if you follow my tutorials. Same again with that piece. Push it all against the strip and then remove the excess glue and again bring your pegs in. I'll just see if I can get another couple in the middle there. And again, that piece can be left to dry. Once you've allowed enough time for the glue to dry, remove the pegs and then sand along each edge of each piece just to make sure you've got nice flush edges along there and no overhanging mouldings. And just sweep the piece across your sandpaper just in the one direction like that. Do that on both sides. And then bring in your two remaining legs and we're going to make a pencil mark three millimetres or one eighth of an inch from the bottom of each leg. So just do a little pencil mark across there, the other leg as well. And then we're going to glue the back piece and the short support between those legs so that the back piece sits flush with the top and the short support sits just above that pencil line we've just made. So we begin by applying glue along each edge of the back piece. And just pop that back down on your work surface and then just dot a little bit of glue on the end, each end of the short support. And then glue the back piece to the left leg first and the short support so it's sitting just above that little pencil line and then bring in your remaining leg again make sure you've got a nice flush top edge there's something sitting under there I'm just going to turn that around Check that you've got a flush edge along the top and you've got time to manoeuvre before your glue begins to take and then make sure you're in line with that pencil line at the bottom and make sure everything is sitting flat against your work surface as well otherwise the support may try and sit at a bit of an angle. Press it all down and all together stick there and then don't pick that piece up but just slide it along your work surface and that can be left to dry. Whilst that back piece is drying bring in your side piece and place it moulding side down. Don't forget to sand each edge and I've just done this piece and then we're going to draw a line down the centre of the short edge. So make a little pencil mark at the top and bottom Turn that around and join that up. Place your rule just below the pencil marks to allow for the thickness of the pencil nib. You can then go to one side and we're going to do the same thing with the top and bottom pieces. So a line down the centre of the shortest edge. So again, do your pencil mark at the top and bottom of the piece. Turn and join. And then when you join that line up, just continue it onto the front and back edge of the piece. And that will help when we're placing the draw divide. Same on the other piece. So 
So normally we build pieces from left to right. This time we're building from right to left. So this will be the back of the piece and we'll construct this way and then we'll be joining the constructed piece onto the back of our front section. So that's just why I'm doing it the other way round in case you wonder. So bring in your back piece and place it face down on your work surface. And then I want to attach the moulded side piece to the back of the left leg. But so that it's sitting just alongside this back piece. So I'll attach that and then I'll lift that up and show you what I mean. And you'll, you probably know what I mean, you're probably familiar now with the construction of these sort of pieces. So, so that your pencil line is facing inwards and your mold, molded side outwards, just attaching that to the sort of front of that left hand leg. Remove that excess glue. Make sure you've got a nice flush edge along the top here. And then I'll just show you how I've joined that there. So if you can see it's sitting towards the front of that leg. So you've got that same sort of lip at the back at the back as you've got at the side. Like that. I just want to remove the excess glue from along that edge as well. Turn that back like that and then you've got the two pieces here, the top and bottom, they're both the same, so bring in one of those and this is going to sit on the inside edge of those joined pieces and again so that the pencil line is facing inwards and we want to have a nice flush top edge. So apply glue to one long and one short edge, I can't remember which is my clean cocktail stick now. So attach it along the top of the back piece and just use your finger along that outside edge to make sure you've got a nice flush edge. And then I'll show you from that side. You can, I'm just going to push that up a little bit, it's just going in on that corner. And then bring this side piece in to meet it and that will square the whole thing up. And just use your finger there to make sure you've got that nice flat flush edge at the top. Just move that out of place. Push it all together. And then lay that down flat on your work surface. And bring in your draw divide and again this is one of the pieces that I've advised to cut so that the shortest edge is in the direction of the wood grain and that's just because this is going to become the front edge of the piece, the visible piece and the wood that runs in the direction of the grain is always neater, you don't get that sort of bobbly finish. And this is going to sit right over that central line we've drawn. So apply glue to the long and one short edge. One long and one short, I should say. And I'm just checking which is my neatest shorter edge. And I think it's this one. So I'm going to apply glue to that back one. And then glue it over the line. Back one into place as well. And because it's cut this way, so that the grain is along the shorter edge, you might find it bends a little bit. So use your line at the front as well to make sure that it's sitting where it should. And then it should be central with that line that's on the back of the side piece there. And I can see that I've just cut mine a tiny little bit too long, but that's okay. I'm still going to attach it. And then once the glue has completely dried, I can sand that front edge and make it all nice and flush. And then what you can do 
is just bring in your smaller rule and just measure from the back to the start of the divide and then do that along the front edge as well and they should be the same and then if not you can manoeuvre them if you need to and it's just because the wood like I say is cut in the opposite way and it might bend a little bit then we're going to attach the bottom piece and again so the pencil line is on the inside and again this is going to sit on the inside of those joined pieces like so Apply your glue to one short and one long edge. And then I should have said this first, but just apply a line of glue along the top edge of the divide. Like that. And then lay that carefully into place so that you're not knocking the draw divide. And you should have a nice flush edge along this bottom here. So gently press it down, make sure it's going right into that corner, you don't want to press it down too far, and then just pick it up and check that the divide again is sitting centrally over that line as well as that one. Press it down along the divide as well. I'm just holding that together while the glue begins to take and then lay the piece onto the back and bring in the long divide and we're going to stick these so they're level with the short divide and again on the inside edge of that leg and the same on that side so apply a dot of glue to one end glue that into place making sure it's level with the short one that's in place sort of press and hold for a moment very carefully remove any excess glue the remaining one as well Again, level with that short support. Press and hold. And then I'm just going to let this dry off for a moment, just probably a couple of minutes, just so that it's more of a sturdy piece for us then to attach to the front section of the island. Okay, so that's been drying off now for a couple of minutes. So now apply glue along these exposed edges. A little dot of glue onto the end of each long support. And then I actually find it easier if you push this down onto the back piece. So lay your sorry onto the front piece. So lay the front piece face down like that so the nice flat edge is facing upwards and then carefully lift and the draw section should be flush along the top edge and flush along this side edge as well so flush with the edge of this leg so get the top piece in place first make sure you've got a nice flush edge along there and then pull it towards this front edge of this leg like that Press that down and maybe whilst you're still holding it you want to place these supports so that they're flush with the bottom of the unit there. So the bottom of the support is flush with the bottom of this unit here. Get the other one into position as well and then just very carefully press it down. That one's sort of popped out of position so just Maneuver it back in, and then I just want to make sure that's staying where it should and it has dropped a little bit. So, this is a question of sort of checking and maneuvering and holding all at the same time. 
until your glue begins to take. And it's very important that you keep this flush line along this top edge here because that's where we'll be attaching our island top. I did just move it out of place again. But as you know, you've got a bit of time before your glue begins to take. So press that into place and then I'm checking the long supports again that they're staying where they should. And I can feel now that the glue is beginning to take. So whilst that's happening, I'm going to grab some masking tape and hold it all together. So I've got a nice long piece of tape here. I'm going to put it over that top. Pull that down onto that front piece. Double checking that it's staying where it should. And I'm not too worried about what the long supports are doing at this stage. I just want to get this piece into the right place. And then they can be manoeuvred. I want to put a piece right over that back edge as well and onto the front. So pull that over there. And I'm going to pick it up and I'm pulling really tightly now to pull this piece against the front section and then tuck that in there. Okay, so I'm now going to come around and check that these long supports are staying where they should and I pretty much think they are. Okay, so I've got another nice long piece of tape here. I'm going to put that right over that edge, so pull it down on this side first where the support was in the right place. And then I'm going to pull it down over here and pull in this support that I've just cut slightly too short into place, like that. And stick that around the front as well. I'm just pushing that down. And that piece can then be left to dry. Okay, so I left my island dry in overnight and I've just removed the masking tape. And then remember I said to you that I'd cut the draw divide a little bit too long, so I was going to have to sand that once complete. Well, I've just done that. And when I've come to cut my slats for the bottom here, I've just measured. And where I've sanded, a little on this side it's no longer 60 mil it's just a tiny bit under so I'm then going to cut my slats a little bit shorter as well because I don't want them hanging over the edges they shouldn't be any wider than the actual island so any wider than these um, sort of outside legs so that's just one thing to bear in mind if you need to do any sanding to tidy up um, especially this drawer area I would think and then the other thing I just wanted to talk to you about, when you come to um, cut your slats, because we're making several cuts into one piece of wood, it's a good idea after you've cut a couple to keep checking against your um, work mat, against the grid lines, that you've still got a straight edge. After you've sort of made two or three cuts, if you've gone fractionally above or below your pencil mark you'll find that this starts to taper off a little bit and then all of them will be off a little bit so I normally cut two or three and then I'll check again by lining it up like the left hand side and the top with the lines on the cutting mat and then if you find that you've got a tiny bit of a slant you can just push it up to that top line and then put your ruler across and just straighten it off just take off a little slither of wood there and then keep going and then after a couple check again. When you've cut your slats take just one of them and we're going to cut a 5mm square or 13 64 of an inch square from two corners along one long edge. So begin by making a pencil mark 5 millimetres from each end along one long edge, 5 millimetres or 13 64ths of an inch, put those out of the way, and then turn the piece and make a pencil mark 5 millimetres from the long edge, and from the other edge, if you see what I mean. 
like that. And then we're going to cut into that now and firstly across the or against the grain of the wood. So make the first cut against the grain of the wood and that will prevent the wood from splitting. So just use the tip of your knife to cut into the wood like that and then you can turn it and cut that corner away like that. So I've just cut the corner out of that end and then do the same at the other end against the grain first. I'm going to have to get in your way there because I can't hold on to it otherwise. If you were to cut in the direction of the grain first, when you make the second cut the wood will just split, so we'll do it that way round. And then this is our end slat, so which will fit around the, this end of the table. So you just want to make sure that that then fits in nicely. That's where it will sit. And if it's a little bit tight, you can just cut a little tiny bit more off, but just do a little tiny bit at a time so you don't cut too much away. So the slats are now ready for wood dye, so I'll just put those to one side for the moment. And as I always say, when you're creating a piece that has got drawers, always construct the main unit first and then remeasure the drawer openings and resize these pieces accordingly. And that's just because if you've slightly misplaced the drawer divide or any of the other pieces, that will affect the size of the drawer openings. So I always give um, the measurements in the cutting list, but they are just to be used as a guide. And then what you would do is measure the width and the height for this particular drawer. Because it goes back so deep, I'm only going to do them, or the side, 25 millimeters deep, and then we'll put a little drawer stop in at the back, rather than making a really long drawer that goes all the way back. So measure your width and height and resize accordingly. And you just want to deduct half a millimeter, if that, from each of those measurements, and that way the drawer will just slide in and out nice and smoothly. But like I say, keep your depth of the drawer or the side 25 millimetres. And then when you've cut the pieces, begin by applying glue along each edge of the base. Put that down on your work surface and attach the sides so that you've got a nice flush line along the front and back. Over there like that. And then I'm just going to bring in my spare pieces of strip and I just like to use these to push those sides up against the base and it squares it off as well. Like that. Just slide that along and that can be left to dry. Do the same thing with the remaining drawer. Once they're then dry enough that you can pick them up without them falling apart Apply glue along the front and back edges. Put that back down and you can then attach the front and back pieces, making sure you've got a nice flush edge along each side so that you're making a nice square box. Just manoeuvre those side pieces into place if you need to. And then just very carefully pick it up and squeeze it all together. And again, that can be left to dry. Complete the remaining one. Make the drawer for the front of the island in the same way. And then Check that your drawers fit nicely into place. You may need to do some gentle sanding I have with these. And then use your small rule to measure inside the drawer opening depth wise. And then measure your um, drawer depth wise as well. And that will give you the measurement for the drawer stop. 
So try it into place first, just push it to the back of the drawer there, as far as you can go. And then pop the drawer in. And that should then sit nice and flush with the front of that part of the unit. If so, take your drawer out. It's difficult when you haven't got a handle. And then I've got some tweezers here. And I'm just going to use that to hold the drawer stop while I apply glue to the back. And then push that right to the back there. And you can use the tweezers to push it down against the wood as well. Make sure it's sitting right to the back, otherwise it'll sit too far forward. But don't put your drawer straight back in because you might have some glue smears in there and your drawer will get stuck. So pop that to one side. And I've already tried this one, so I'll glue this one into place as well. Like that. And then I'm just going to use a spare cocktail stick just to remove the glue from along the front of that piece there and they can be left to dry and we'll shape our towel rail holders okay so take one of the towel rail holders and just begin by making a pencil mark five millimeters or 13 64ths of an inch from the right hand edge in the direction of the grain like that and then turn the piece I'm going to do another mark five millimeters up from the bottom so you've got two little marks in the corner and then we're going to join those with a curved line like that so five millimeters up from the bottom and then five millimeters along that edge there join them with a curved line and then bring in your scribe tool and we're just going to etch that line into the wood just gently you're not trying to cut through going over the pencil line like that and then bring in your craft knife and just go over that line with the tip of the craft knife okay not really trying to cut it out yet we're just scoring that line a little bit further into the wood and then you can come in along the grain of the wood just make some slits like that just a couple because it's just a small area and then you can carefully remove each section with the tip of the craft knife again. Like that. And then take a piece of fine grade sandpaper and just make it into a sort of roll like that. And then you can sand that little corner. And then you can also just sand to round off each of those outer corners of the curve. Just to make a nicer shape. Do that at the bottom as well. like that. And then repeat that process with the remaining holder. Okay, we're now going to glue them into place. So apply glue along the straight edge. And that's the edge in direction in the direction of the grain. And then we're going to glue it onto this leg here. And you can have it on the other side if you like, but I thought because the drawers are here, this is more likely to be the working area. So I'd have the towel rail this side. But if it looks nicer um, in your doll's house kitchen, then have it on the other side. And we want to glue it right at the top of that leg and on the inside edge. So get it in position so it's flush with the top of the unit like that. And then I'm just going to bring that piece of strip in again. And you can just place that alongside the back of the leg 
and push that against it and then you know you've got that straight edge. Pushing it against the leg as well. And once it's dry enough I will just sort of hold it up and show you exactly where it's glued. So it's right at the top of the leg there, flush with the top of the unit and flush as well with the inside edge of that leg. And then put the other one in the same position but on the other side. And we're going to put the cocktail stick rail in later on because I'm actually going to use wood dye for my rail. But if you want to just paint the rail, you can put that in now. Although I actually do find it easier to paint without the rail in there because you can get to this sort of back piece without it being in the way. But it's up to you. That piece of strip in again, make sure it's flush there. So that piece is now ready for paint, as are the drawers, and the front drawer as well. So that can all be put to one side. We're going to be applying wood dye to the slats at the bottom. We've got the one there that we cut the corner out of, so they're there as well. So the final thing that we've got to prepare is the top, and again I'm going to be doing this in the wood dye. And all I actually want to do with this is to round off each edge on both sides, so on the top and bottom of the wood. So just have your sandpaper on your worktop, hold the piece at an angle, and as you sweep it towards you, bring it into an upright position. We only want to take away that straight edge, so you only have to do a few sweeps. Do that all the way around. And then I like to finish that piece off in my hand just with a piece of fine grade sandpaper and just again hold it at an angle and sweep it around all the edges. And that just really finishes it off nicely then. Again do it on both sides of the wood. And then finally I just like to round off the corners. Not too much but just so you haven't got an exact point. And then lay the piece flat on your work surface and sand the side that you want at the top. And then use a nice soft brush to remove the sanding dust. Once this piece is in place you will be able to see around the underside so you need to apply wood dye just to the outside edge of the underside. So make yourself a little masking tape handle, just a strip of tape, apply it to the back, make a little loop, a little handle like that and then I just use another couple of pieces to hold that in place. And that way you can hold onto the piece while you go around that underside and also whilst you paint the top and then you've got a nice little stand for when the wood dye is drying. So I've done the first coat of paint on the island and the drawers and they're drying over there on that plastic tray and now I'm going to do the first coat of wood dye on the wood pieces. I'm going to start with the top piece. So I've got the tape tab here. I've got my gloves on because I'm actually going to be holding on to the slats as I paint them because they obviously need to be, um, sorry as I add the wood dye, because they need to be sort of stained on both sides of the piece. So I'll just hold them with these gloves on. Just doing around the outside edge of the underside there which is visible once the piece is in place. It's very important to give the wood dye a really good shake uh, before use, otherwise the sediment will sit at the bottom and you won't get the true colour. But it's so easy to apply as you can see. I 
and it does actually stain the wood that what, that's what it's doing so it soaks right into the wood that's why you get a lovely rich color so as for my other kitchen pieces I'll be applying two coats of this light oak and then I'll be finishing with that coat of dark oak which I wipe off straight away and that gives me the, the same color as the other pieces that I've got in there I'll just wipe that round and this feels dry to the touch straight away but it will take a few hours to dry completely so I'll leave that and move on to another project and then come back and do the second coat put that on there as well and get on with the slats One thing I forgot to mention as well, I've also applied the wood dye here to a cocktail stick and I've just poked that into a piece of sponge to dry and I'll be using that for the towel rail. So I've applied the wood dye to the whole cocktail stick and then we'll cut that to size and fit it once the wood dye has dried. So I did two coats of paint on the unit and the drawers and I sanded with the 500 sandpaper after each coat had dried and now I'm going to attach the slats on the back part here and I'm going to apply the glue to the shorts around at this end and then because that sort of final slat curls round just put a little dot of glue in front of each of those legs and then that one will just sit around there like that. Press it down against the support make sure you're pushing it right up against the leg and then take one of the straight ones and this is going to sit just alongside the back of the sort of front part of the island so just Dab a little bit of glue at each side on the long support and that one sits right up against that back and you want it so that the front and back is flush with that leg at the side there or each of those legs so that sits in there like that and now we're going to attach the central slat so bring in your rule and then just make a pencil mark on the centre on the front of this long support here like that and then turn the piece around and do the same in the centre of the long slat to that side like that and then apply a little bit of glue on each of the long supports just above that central mark and then you can lay one of the slats across just roughly lining it up so the centre of the slat is over that little pencil line if you're not very good at measuring by eye then you can measure that as well make a little pencil mark on the bottom of the slat And then using your rule or a spare piece of wood, line it up along the back of those legs and then push the slat towards it and then you'll know that the slats are all going to be lined up at both sides. Like that. And then we're going to put one in the centre of each of these gaps. So again apply a little bit of glue in the centre of each slat. And this one I'm just going to place by eye, but if you want to measure again and do your little pencil mark, then you can do that. Again, use your wool or spare piece of wood to push that back. I just want to have a look from the front angle there, make sure I'm right in the middle. And then we'll have one more slat to place between 
each of those. And I'm not worrying about the glue, the glue residue at the moment. I'll wipe that off at the end. On that side as well. And then you can go ahead and glue the remaining slats into place in between each of those. Like that. And then I'm just going to let that dry off a moment before I remove the excess glue from between the slats just because I don't want to knock them out of position. We're now going to attach the top part and I just want to use up some of this glue I've still got on my piece of card here. Make sure you spread it right over to the edges of the wood onto those legs. I thought I might have had to tip some more onto the card but I might just have enough here. Okay, and then the top is just going to sit evenly over the top of the unit so there will be an even overhang around all edges. So you can just pick it up and check that you've got the same amount sort of showing around each edge and at the back there. Press that into place. Again, when you're pressing down, go inside the drawer opening. Don't press on the bottom bit there, it's not as sturdy. I just want to remove some of that excess glue from underneath. Okay, so I've got a piece of tape here that I'm just going to put right over the top of the sort of front part like that. And then for the rest of it, because of the shape, I am actually going to use clamps. So I've got a whole load here. I'll start at the front like that. And I always say it, I know, but do fit on as many as you can. Because already, if you have a look, you can see see how it's trying to lift up and away from the top. Make sure they're secured before you let go of them as well, because sometimes they can ping off when you're not expecting it. I'm going to pop another one in there. And these ones open probably to about an inch, I would say, or 25 millimetres. So they're ideal for things of this size. And again, when you're clipping them on, because they're very strong, don't put it too far in so that it's sort of going on to the bottom. Keep it to the sides where you've got a more sturdy section to attach it to. I like that and then I've got another clamp there so I'll just put that one at the back there. Like that. Just check that you're sort of holding it down everywhere and then there's no little corners peeping up. I just want to move that in a little bit more. I'm just going to pull that bit of tape a little bit tighter there so I can just see a little bit of a lift at that corner. So go around and have a check. And again, that can be left to dry. We're now going to fit the towel rail. So take your craft knife and cut one of the pointed ends. 
and it helps if you roll the cocktail stick along as you're doing it. And then take your cut end and put it into place, but just sort of line it up with the edge of the towel rail holder there. And then I might just have to get in your way for a moment actually, but bring in your craft knife and we're just going to measure for the second cut. I always like to just go a little bit further along, so just sort of come slightly in front of that second towel rail and make the mark there because it's better to cut it longer um, than you need rather than too short. So cut that end as well. Get rid of that. And then just apply a tiny little dot to each end. And I'm just looking because I had one one side looked a little bit neater. And sort of whack the wood dye had congealed slightly at the other so I'm just having that facing forwards. So push it into place so it's sitting in the middle of that holder and then just very gently pull the holders out so that it fits inside. Position it so it's evenly placed. We're sort of placing it in the upper part of the holder. So just above the curve there and try and get it to sit centrally in this straight part here and a little bit back from the front edge as well. And you don't need to measure, you can just do that by eye. You get both ends so that they're sort of sitting in the same position. Look from the front to make sure that it's straight with the line of your top. I think I just need to go up slightly on the right there. Just look from the front. That's right. And then when you're happy with the position, just push the two sides together and hold that for a second until the glue begins to take. And then again, use your cocktail stick just to remove that excess glue. We're now going to fit the casters. And I'm using these brass casters. And these are available for sale in my Etsy shop. Now they come in packs of four. You'll need six for this project, but I will be doing a tutorial for a chair that will have a couple of casters on the front legs. That's one of my plans for my Dolls House study. So the other two won't go to waste if you wanted to order the two packs. But you may already have some of these amongst your bits and pieces. I've got here in my drill a naught. 0.65 millimeter drill bit. So begin by turning your island onto the top and we're going to make a little pencil mark in the center of each of the legs at so the bottom there. Find a sharp pencil. So just measure across the leg and make a little line across the center like that. And then you can go in the other direction and as we do when we're attaching draw knobs just put that little dot in the middle there Oops. like that and then drill down into the pencil mark keep your drill as upright as you can is going to erase that pencil line as well. I know it can't be seen but I'll know it's there. <laughs> and then take your first caster and I'm actually just going to put a little dot of glue over the hole as well. And this is just to make it extra secure. I'm pretty sure you could just pop the caster into place but I like to put that little dab of glue and then press it down into place. I'm just going to grab another cocktail stick. Now, I don't want to press actually on the wheel part there because I don't want to break it. So I'm just going to use a cocktail stick and push it down just sort of under the wheel, so sort of like in the little holder part. Push it into place. 
Make sure as well it's flat against the bottom of the leg. And there's our first caster. So do that at the bottom of each leg. Final one there. I really like how that looks with the casters on. I was going to use just a straight leg, but I'm really glad I decided to go with the casters. So now to fit the draw pulls. Because the front drawer is quite wide, I'm going to use two pulls. I'm going to place one at either side like that. So I'm going to begin by making a pencil mark 12 millimetres or half an inch in from each edge. So just do a faint little pencil mark to start. 12 millimetres or half an inch. And then I want to place them about three millimetres down from the top, or one eighth of an inch. So then you can do your little line there, and I'll be placing the centre of each pull, just below that little line. Okay. I've got my tweezers here to handle them with. And again, just using my Gorilla Wood Glue for this. Works well with these. So I'm just judging the centre of the pull by eye. And I'm just going to place it just so it hides that little pencil mark I've made. Press that into place. And then have a look at it from the front and you can just measure as well at each side is the same distance from the bottom about 4.5 millimeters and 4.5 like become top heavy now Okay, so the final job then is to attach the pull handles to the side drawers. And you need to remember how far down you attach the handles at the front. And I went three millimetres with mine. So I want to do the same on the side drawers. And if you're looking at it from that sort of angle, they'll look level. So just begin by making a faint pencil mark down the centre of the drawer lengthwise. If you could see my hands trembling, it's because it's so cold in here today. I've got that radiator on in front of my desk, but it's just so chilly here. I've got it sitting here with a scarf on as well. <laughs> and then turn it and make the pencil mark down the shorter edge. So if you're going three millimetres from the top or one eighth of an inch, just do a very faint little line there as well. And that's where the top of your handle will sit. So I'm going to use my tweezers again just to hold the pull. I just want to apply a little bit of glue to the back and again I'm using my Gorilla Wood glue which works well when attaching these brass handles because you're attaching one part to wood. But you could use a tacky glue if you have that. So line it up so that the centre is sitting just below that little line and then you can turn, I can actually see that's a little bit higher one side, so I'll just gently push that down. And then I'm going to use my rule, just as a double check. Yeah, so I've got the same amount each side. And you can double check that way as well. 4.5 and 4.5, so it seems a little bit pernickety. But I like the handles to look straight. And even though they're so tiny, you really can tell if you've put it on at a bit of an angle. So same with the remaining drawer. And there is the completed kitchen island. And I think an island is a nice piece of furniture to include in your kitchen if you don't want to have a table and chairs. I like the look of tables and chairs, but I'm actually going to be having a dining room or a breakfast room in the opposite room to the kitchen. 
and I'll be having table and chairs in there. So when you're looking in from the outside, it just gives a little bit of a different appearance rather than having table and chair in both rooms. So I think an island is a nice addition to the kitchen. So I really hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. If so, please give the video a thumbs up because that helps other people to find it. And if you haven't already subscribed, please hit the subscribe button and the notification button too, and then you'll know every time I upload a new video. And there's lots coming up because now the kitchen furniture is complete. We could start on the miniatures and the accessories, which I think is the exciting part. And don't forget, if you enjoy making your own doll's house furniture and miniatures, you might like my books. I've published five of them so far and they're all available to purchase from Amazon as well as from my Etsy shop and I'll pop the links below. And for now, thank you for watching and I hope to see you again soon.